So the first thing is, what is a short code? So you, know, you hear this all the time. The short code is the five or six digit number that you're sending the text message to. So instead of the full 10 digit, like when you're texting your friends, um, it's just a shorter, easier way to, um, an easier number to remember. And um, examples of some short codes are 30644, 69866, 877, 877. Sometimes people have vanity short codes where it will spell something. But in the end, you still need to know the digits that spell that word. And so the reason we use short codes is when we're you know, doing text message or any type of phone campaigns, everything's going over the um, cell phone carrier's networks, right? It's not like the internet where it's all open. This is the cell phone carriers. And they devise the short code system for organizations to be able to do like a higher volume communication, one to many, versus you know, one to one when you do 10 digit numbers. So the advantages are, well, number one, it's it's how, you know, the carriers mandate that if you, if organizations or, you know, really anybody wants to use their network, they kind of have to use short codes. And, uh, and then, you know, you can send, if you were doing it, sending to a 10 digit number, you could probably send a maximum of like 10 messages a minute or something like that, or 10 a second, where with the short codes, you can do a lot more and reach a lot more people. Within the US, uh, when you're an organization, you can either get your own short code, mm -hmm. or a lot of the people, you know, the vendors like us, will provide a shared short code. And pretty much everybody does that. So uh, the advantage to having your own short code is that's your number. You can sort of brand it. Anytime somebody texts to that number, it's going to your organization. On a shared short code, you know, the vendor um, has to say, okay, who is this? What organization is this person trying to text when people are texting it? Um, if that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, you can choose to get your own short code, or a lot of people will offer shared short codes. Uh, the price to get your own is going to be at least a thousand a month, um, a thousand or fifteen hundred a month, approximately, depending on uh, whether or not you want to choose the number or just get a random number. And so, once you know the short code that you're texting to or sending a text message to, you need to know the keyword that you are texting into that short code so that you can join the organization's list. Um, and so, what is a keyword? Again, it's the word that you're sending. So, in this example, somebody would say, okay, to join our list, text hello to 877-877. You, you open a new text message, you're sending it to 877-877, in the body of the text message is the keyword, just the keyword, hello, and then you click send and it goes through the conversation. And so a lot of times people ask questions like, is this costing me money? And the answer is, well, it's the same as if you're texting your friends. So if you're paying for text to your friends, then yes, it's going to be per so, text. So again, uh, with mobile, the same way with email or with direct mail or anything, you want to kind of know who this person is, uh, not just have a phone number that you're sending messages to. And so the uh, two slides, the uh, um, it's important to either ask them for that information in the text message conversation, or um, check in the CRM or a data source that you have, whether it's you know the van or like a salsa CRM, something like that. Check and try to find out who this is, this person is, and then bring that information into the system. And so when trying to locate um, someone. Uh, their state state reps or uh, congressperson, uh, you can collect that by having them text it in. Um, you can ask for it on a web form if they're signing up for mobile on a web form or a paper form. Um, or you know, one of the kind of higher level um, cooler things is is kind of have this have the systems talking with your CRM. So in this case, and, and Salsa offers this where people can actually text in and then you can locate them in both systems and share the information. So in this slide, I know it's self-explanatory, but you can ask people to sign up on your website, for example, then their information is pulled into your CRM, in this example, Salsa, and then the messaging platform will be hooked up to the CRM system and pull down that information that was collected from the web form. And then from the messaging platform, you can automate it so that this person gets a text message the next day. It's usually around the next day. Um, so they sign up online and then you know they get the welcome message. The other way you can have people join is, like you guys did, you text a word in and then they are pulled into the messaging platform like we showed with Kate's profile. And then since the two systems talk to each other, you also push their information into the CRM and then they get the email. So it can, it can go both ways. One of the first benefits of mobile is 
is uh, being able to bring people in, and mobile will be one of the uh, more likely steps they take to engage. So um, at rallies from media, things like that, people will take out their phone and text in, and just in certain instances, they'll do that a lot easier and a lot more than they'll go home and sign up or fill out something on paper. It's just kind of more scalable in that way. So that's the first part, and that's what we talked about, treating mobile like a web form to collect these people, collect their information, and get that opt-in. Um, moving forward, then you can activate them, and that's definitely like the second um, part. So that's actually like sending them out a message. And because you can know their information because you've asked for it, you can segment and you can be specific about the messages you send them um, and you can ask them to take action. And there's a lot of data out there that sending a text message, um, you'll get good conversion rates on it and it will also then increase conversion rates on other types of media. Um, but specifically the types of things we can ask them to do, really anything, but um, the top ones are we can ask for a response. So we can ask them to tell us their thoughts, uh, polls, surveys, question and answer, or even a response like more data, like you know what is your local, you know what uh, anything, you know how long have you been with an organization, something like that, and collect deeper information. Um, we can generate phone calls. So most of this has been advocacy phone calls, but it's it makes sense that you know they're on their phone getting a text message. It's a really quick move to go from a text message to a phone call because it's on the phone. Um, so that's something we can definitely ask them to do. Uh, web clicks, so more and more people are using their phone for mobile web, um, and so that's something you can ask people to do is go to the web. Um, and then also just complementing other media. So we've seen a lot where you send them an email and a text message reminder about that email. Generating phone calls. This is, uh, you'll hear this over and over again today because all of the organizations do this. It's, it's really a big, uh, benefit of mobile and so you know basically sending a text message out asking people to call in and make an advocacy call the, probably the biggest thing with phone calls is they happen very quick compared to email when you send an email and ask people to call in I believe the, the average is that happens over two days like most of those calls were happen with text messaging what we found is that they will happen within 15 minutes or a half hour and so when you need rapid response, Rishma talked about this, where you know, it, their campaign was actually like after six when, when uh, kind of the statement came out, uh, but they were able to kind of turn this around really quick, send out a text message and, and generate these calls um, immediately. Uh, and that's something to keep in mind. You know, we see a lot of spikes with that. Um, and you actually have to kind of plan for the capacity of the, the representatives sometimes and, and kind of spread out sending the messages because you're overwhelming the phone lines. So with the mobile web, like I said, this is coming, it's, it's just like happening right now. And a year ago, we wouldn't really have much to talk about. Um, but, but now it's really starting to happen with Android and iPhones. And so um, from text messaging, activating people to go to a link uh, is, is an action you can ask them to take. Um, and we're getting some data on this. And basically what, what we know is that it's, you don't want to send people to your homepage on the mobile web because people won't surf as much. And they also, and the other rule is they won't type as much. So the most important thing is to track opt-ins. You want to be able to kind of see where you're having spikes in the list and where people are joining. So look at, you know, if you have a television commercial, something like that, uh, radio PSAs, live events, you should see these spikes and you should test. And like I said, the mobile actually gives you a way to test what people are responding to and what's effective. Generally, with calls to action, you want to be very clear. So um, don't get confusing, don't get too cute with the keyword and things like that. You want to be clear. Text join to one, two, three, four, five instead of something like, hey, text. Uh, you know, help for seniors to, you know, AARP one, and you're like, wait, which is the number? Which is the which is the thing? So you want to be clear. You want to repeat, and then um, you want to give people a good reason to do it. Um, one thing we kind of got used to, I think, in the web was saying, hey, for more information, go to www. Like that's not a good thing for mobile because people know for more information they can go to the web and read all about it. Uh, you want to be specific with your cost to action. So, hey, to help fight this cause, we need you to take out your phone right now and text it or something like that. Um, but, but again, opt-ins are your most important um, metric. Next, um, talking about tracking phone calls. Um, so, with the systems now, um, you can get a lot of detail. So, you can actually track who's making the phone calls instead of just putting a phone number out there. Um, you know, because you're texting, you know that person already. So, you can track who's making the phone calls, 
how long they're staying on the phone, where people are being routed, um, and then obviously the overall number of calls. So um, like Rishima was saying, you can take you can go to your lobbyists and say, like, you know, here the Congress people or the representatives or legislators and say, hey, we delivered this many calls to you. And that's that's really important. And we've seen um, organizations just do some super smart things with that data. Um, but it's important that you're tracking. Um, also, is the person staying on the phone long enough to get to the representative? Which a lot of times, you know, when you're using kind of the just multiplier metrics to say, you know, people reporting that they made a call um, and then multiplying that out, uh, you know, you don't know if they're staying on the phone long and actually getting there, which, which the, the systems can help you with. Web clicks. Um, cool. Again, so probably the most important thing to know from web clicks on your list, there's a lot of services out there like Bitly. Um, you know, tiny URL things. Mobile Commons has it built in as well. But um, you want to be able to know who on your list uses the mobile web, right? And so you want to track who's clicking these links. Um, and then if you're super sophisticated with your website, you'll kind of have the Google Analytics behind it and know like where they're going and how long they're staying and stuff like that. Most people aren't there um, on the mobile web yet. Um, but it's important to know who's clicking links so you can send them and ask them to take action on the mobile web. People that aren't clicking links should probably be segmented and get asked to make a phone call instead, right? Um, and so that's an important distinction. A lot of times people are worried about what phone they have, iPhone or Android, which sometimes matters, but I think it's more important. Like, are they, do they use the mobile web? Um, we've actually also seen with text messages, people forwarding them on and um, to Twitter and Facebook. And then, so in, if you're tracking that link, you can say like, wow, this person's very influential. And when they Twitter something, other people click it. And so that's an effect that we weren't expecting, but it kind of really uh, huge. You can know from your list who your super influencers are. And it's really important to, compared to, uh, you know, email where you're kind of looking at clicks and one conversion, um, you want to do the same thing with mobile. Everything should have some type of ask, whether it's a response, uh, click this link, make this phone call, uh, something like that, because you don't get the open rate, so there's no like overall, like, hey, how's this doing? Um, generally, 99% of the text messages are open, because most phones really kind of have to open them. Um, most of them are read because they're short, so short. But when you're working on a campaign, um, when I'm working with a campaign, I always, every third or fourth message at the very least, should have some type of action you can track to see if it's working. Um, if you're just sending out information, it's really hard to, to build and gain knowledge from that campaign and know how to like, change things. You want to ask people to click, ask people to call, um, or respond so that you're getting some data back from 